the art of authentic communication. Join us for an interview with Steve Spiro. He's the master connector as he shares his ex expertise on authentic communication. Steve will offer practical tips for building meaningful relationships by connecting authentically with others. He'll discuss being others focused, authentic, excuse me, overcoming obstacles and building community. Don't miss this enlightening opportunity to learn from Steve. Welcome to the Wellness Driven Life Show, where you're about to go on a wellness driven ride. Welcome everyone to the show, and I'm excited to introduce our guest for you today. Steve Spiro is a business automation consultant who started his first company in advertising after college. In addition to his professional achievements, he also holds impressive martial arts credentials, including a fourth degree black belt in karate and a first degree in jujitsu. Steve credits much of his success to the discipline, integrity, and fearlessness he developed through martial arts training. He is also a master connector with over 41,000 contacts and hosts a weekly LinkedIn live broadcast called The Master Connector Show. Steve is passionate about self-development and encourages others to step out of their comfort zones. Please help me welcome Steve. What's going on? How you doing, April? Steve Spiro, the master connector coming at you live and direct. I got to always do that. This is my signature. So how's it you going? You do. It's going great. And and I apologize. I think I was mispronouncing your last name. It's Spiro. Oh, right. no, it is Spiro. It's funny. When I did the martial arts and I trained the, the kids, uh, they, you know, a lot of them were three or four years old. They, you know, in the martial arts, especially when you hit a level, you you're, use your last name, right? So when you're up to secondary black belt, it's Mr. So, you know, Mr. and your last name or Mrs. if you're or Ms. and your last name. And then eventually you, you sensei and, and your last name. So Spiro. So I would say, um, OK, you take a spear and then I would put my hand like this and I would go to their stomach. I wouldn't hit them, but I would like and then you go, you, you go, oh, so Spiro. <laughs> that's it. Nice. Oh, that's a great way to remember it. I like it. Absolutely. Well Welcome so much to the Wellness Driven Life Show. I'm excited to talk to you today about your journey. You've had, just like many of us, many ups and downs, but I love what you've done to kind of move past that and what you're doing now and teaching us so much about how to connect with others. Connection is such a huge piece of really being human, being vulnerable, and just excelling on all levels. You have to have that piece. So let's start from the beginning. Would you love to introduce yourself a little bit so we know more about you? Well, you, you said it all in the intro for the most part, but you know, one of the things that I, I don't know if you touched on was that I grew up in the Bronx, shy and introverted, picked on bully, learning disabled dyslexic. So wait a minute, there are five people in the Bronx? Is that possible? I, yeah, well, maybe, maybe there was one and that might've been the only one, but yes, that was me for sure. Um, yeah, I know that mostly the, the, there's a perception about it, but yeah, I was one of those shy guys, but, and then my parents got divorced early on. So yeah, we, we struggled financially. So I always had that, this sort of this chip on my shoulder and I always wanted to succeed. And, uh, I always kind of, you know, had this edge about me and eventually wound up going into the advertising industry, as you said. Did, did well with that, started a company out of college, had a small advertising agency in the tail end of the Mad Men era. Uh, it was a wild and crazy ride, and I had a partner, and that was fun. And economy shifted, things dried up, and I was out of work. But I, I had met 
about a year before that had happened, an entrepreneur who was extremely successful who took me under his wing and took on a mentoring role with me. And he's, he challenged me. He challenged me to be uh, to get out of my comfort zone and to to meet three strangers every single day. And when you're an oh, introvert wow. from the Bronx, that's the last thing you want to do, right? But I, you know, I said, all right, I'll do it. And you know, in the Bronx, especially in New York. If you talk to strangers, I wasn't living in the Bronx, but back, back, back then I was already in Westchester County, sort of they, they call it upstate New York, uh, the suburbs. But still, in the New York area, you talk to strangers, they want to shoot you or kidnap you. So it was definitely not a part of my comfort zone for sure. But he, he stretched me, got me out of my comfort zone. And that started the path of self-development and networking and started to grow a network and eventually started to get to a place where I was just now in a, you know, where I wanted to um, do more. And so eventually got into tech, tech sales and, and then eventually now business automation consulting, as you as you kind of mentioned. But through that, I started doing speaking. And, and that's really where a lot of my passion lies, because I really want to be uh, the, the light. My mission on this planet is to be the light, uplift, inspire and encourage. And I have the LinkedIn live show. I obviously do speaking. I've, I just uh, published a book. Uh, the Dow of a Master Connector, um, and so it's been a blast. It really has been a blast um, being a being able to really inspire people. So that's kind of a little bit about me. Well, that's a lot said in a little bit of time, and it sounds to me like you had this incredible mentor who really took you on this journey of expansion in ways that very very few of us, you know do not do that. Do not experience that. We, we refuse to push ourselves in that direction, but speaking to three strangers each and every day is pretty profound. I would love to know a little bit more about your experience. Cause like you said, even the area, the environment that you were in was sometimes hostile. Tell <laughs> us a little bit about that experience for you. It's interesting, right? So when I, I travel, I love traveling. I'll be in Charlotte in about a week. And, uh, you know, when you go to the South or different parts, Midwest, people are super friendly. And, you know, you, you, I would meet people and, you know, after like two, three, four, five minute conversation, it'd be like, they, they'd be like to me, hey, Steve, come on over for dinner like tonight. Like, I mean, but in the in the New York area, no, it's it's but people were they've got a rough exterior. But I found that when you mm. break space or make an interruption, people were definitely, they're definitely open. And it depends. You got to pick pick and choose your time and place. You know, like if you're talking to somebody at the airport where we're, we're there for two and a half hours waiting or however long it is, people are friendly. Uh, you know, on the plane, you know, or, or if you're at a gym, I you know, talk to people at the gym. As long as they're stationary, it's hard if you just, you know, you just grab somebody on the street as they're walking by you. That's they're in the New York area. They're like, they they think you're up to something. There's like a scam coming on or something, but, <laughs> but it was definitely, I mean, there's tons of stories, crazy stories. Uh, I want to keep this G rated, but uh, that, you know, people just, yeah, it was, it's wild, but, it, but transformation happened and I started to get good at connecting. Initially it was very transactional and very, you know, just trying to get a, you know, a person's contact information with no agenda, but, of course, they thought it was an agenda there. So, but it's yeah. been a wild, wild journey for sure. Well, there definitely is an art to gracefully navigating uh, a conversation and having that situational awareness. Oh, and yeah. you, I'm sure you learned much of that in martial arts through martial arts that you really have to observe your surroundings. And it definitely helps you uh, key in on those skills on how to speak with others, how to communicate the body language, et cetera. And, you know, if we, if we go into stories uh, about your experience with meeting new people, what was one of your most profound experiences where you really had a lesson learned in it? What was something that maybe was an aha moment for you with meeting somebody new? I mean, there's so many stories I could tell you because I've created some amazing relationships, friendships, collaboration. Um, it's been a while. I just want to just touch on the whole martial arts thing. So one of the things that I loved about the martial arts for me was because I want people to understand the context here. You know, I I was the guy, you know, it was a, there was a lot of hurt in my life, rejection, all that. And I'm not, it's not, this is not a woe is me, but I was so 
in my shell, clammed up. Uh, you know, I didn't want to, you know, I didn't want to get, you know, I, I, I actually learned how to block pain. Before I joined the martial arts, I learned how to block pain. And so when I joined the martial arts and they said, listen, you show no emotion and you block pain. You don't show you, you you're, you're hurt or whatever. I'm like, oh, this is perfect. I mean, that's a great spot for me. So, yes, I learned some things in the martial arts. I wound up becoming an instructor, became a sensei. That's fine. And I learned how to command a class. And, yeah, I learned about, you know, combative, you know, awareness, situational awareness, all that. But people skills, not so good. Back, back then, I was like, you know, I'd rather, you know, I'd rather hit you than talk to you. It was not a lot of people skills going on there. <laughs> but yeah. one of the things I did learn and I took from the martial arts is when you're when you're when you want to lead a conversation, and, and I don't mean in a kind of manip manipulative kind of sense, but I learned that just like in the martial arts, if you're in a fight, you know, we would we would do sparring. It wasn't anything serious. We weren't trying to kill each other, although there was some people in my class that were trying to kill me. But in general, it was just combative, right? And I learned that if you're the one striking and punching, because I did karate, as you said, fourth degree in karate, first in jujitsu. In karate, it was a lot of striking, punching and, and kicking. If you're striking, if you're punching, kicking, et cetera, typically the person that's that you're up against is busy blocking and defending. Mm -hmm. And when you're and and when and the opposite's true. So I learned in conversation, the person asking the question is in control of the conversation and is essentially blocking, uh, striking and, and you know punching and kicking, right? And the person answering the question is blocking, right? So if to, to uh, what I learned about conversation is you lead through asking questions and you just keep the conversation going. And if they answer you, but then ask you a question, great, I'll block punch, right? I learned in the arts, we learned to block punch where you know you answer question in this in the case of communication you answer and then you ask a question again so now you have control back of the conversation so those are some things i learned but yeah i mean i there's so many stories i could tell you but i met the one that comes to mind is you know i was at a um my the only the one and only time i went to my nephew's soccer game and you know i i pulled up and and uh, there was a bunch of moms but there was one guy you know, a uh, sharp looking guy who's dressed in a you know suit, whatever. And I was dressed a little bit nice, too. And, you know, kind of we kind of gravitated towards each other. And I found out later, you know, he's like because he was a financial is, is a financial planner. He's like, oh, potential prospect. And I'm and I'm you know, I saw but I'm I'm there and I'm you know looking to collaborate. I, you know, I've got several businesses at that point and I'm looking to maybe expand with some stuff on. So I, but I'm just looking to connect. And so we're we're talking. We had a great conversation. And we wound up becoming one of the one of my closest friends and, be, and and collaborated not on his financial planning stuff, but on some of the other projects I had going on. And I became kind of a mentor to him, which has been which has been amazing. And so so that's just one example. I mean, I've, I've met people at this at a gas station and have become closest, dearest friends to me and my wife. I mean, I could tell you so many stories of these random, you know, it's happened through LinkedIn now. I mean, I've got a, a super close friend that I met through LinkedIn and um, actually I'm going to North Carolina to see him and we've got some business stuff doing down there. So it's just been a wild journey. I could tell you so many stories, but. Um, I think the beautiful yeah. thing is, is that you can, and that's part of the, the desire to want to connect with so many people because the stories are so many and they just continue to happen, those connections. And when you travel, you always have somebody to see and a place to stay yep. and people to enjoy life with. And right. so I also, you know, I, I really like that you have all of the stories and it sounds to me like you really went the route of mentoring others. Like you said, you developed a very close friendship who you ended up mentoring. That's what you're doing now. You're teaching others. And we always seem to work on the things uh, that we want to learn most. So you came from a very a, a shy person where you knew that you needed to expand and be vocal in order to be seen. And that's exactly what you're doing now. That's right. Yeah, it's it's to, when I look at who I am today and what I was, it's night and day. And, you know, the good news is and I want anyone who's listening to this 
that if I could do it, you could do it. it this transformation wasn't anything. It's not, it's, it's all about Steve. It's about, you could do it. I mean, through a lot of self-development, personal growth, um, a lot of just willingness to change and just try, fail, adjust. It's It's been an amazing journey. Uh, so, and that's why one of my pillars is having the grit to overcome obstacles because I've learned to take the adversities that I've had in my life and turn them into some of my biggest strengths, right? I had the learning disability, right? So what that did is that created my brain. Well, I learned how to use that and be creative in terms of how I problem solve because I couldn't go the traditional route. So I, I got creative and uh, still to this day, if you give me instructions, I don't read them because I don't, I, I just can't process. I just, I dive in and figure it out. And I've actually become pretty good at the techie, although you wouldn't know because we had some tech, I had some technical challenges just before we launched, but it's typically I, I figure stuff out because my brain is a figure it out kind of brain. And that was facilitated through having this learning disability that uh, that made me force me to be creative in how I, I got over these these challenges. Right. Yeah. And I love the grit factor. That's such a great word. And it, it's just that continuing on moving forward, figuring out a way. There's always a way. Yeah, no doubt. It It's. One of the things that I, I, I go by and I say is, if you don't quit, you win, right? And, mm -hmm. you know, there's a great point, you know, I love books. Actually, I, you can see I, I, I wrote my own finally, but, <laughs> but um, one of my books that I really enjoy is, um, uh, it's The Infinite Game by, uh, I believe yeah. it's Simon Sinek, I think, or Gladwell, one of those two. Um, but Infinite Game, I believe it's, I believe it's Sinek. But uh, it's just the idea of, yeah, it's not about win or lose. If you, the one who just keeps keeps going and and is left standing is going to win win ultimately in a sense, right? Uh, so mm -hmm. I just I just don't I don't have a quit bone in my body, you know. That's one of my superpowers, if you will, is I just don't know how to quit. Um, and so yeah, that's why I, I made black belt. I mean, so many people started our you know in our class and many, many of them quit. And, and the ones that stuck with it, that's what lesson I learned in the martial arts. If you stick with it, you do the work, you follow the sensei, the mentor, if you will, you'll succeed, you know, just, just don't quit. So it's been a blast. Yeah. It's been, been wild. Yeah. I slow and steady runs the race. I'd say that one of my lessons in life is to just, yes, you keep moving, but it doesn't mean you have to do it fast. And right. it doesn't, you know, it doesn't have to be right now. Patience has been definitely one for me, one of the biggest lessons. And yeah, absolutely. Just the little things that you do each day to help build you up. It's that one step at a time. Absolutely. I just yeah. heard an interesting thing that uh, by one gentleman, I was watching him speak and he said, you know, sometimes it's too hard to take one day at a time. So take one meal at a time. There you go. Yeah. yeah. So yeah, just different you. perspectives. How, how do you eat an elephant one bite at a time? Yeah. You know? um, it, it's it. By the way, I'm um another book I'm in the middle of right now. It's um by John Acuff. It's called Finish, and it's kind of hit. That's a big part of his point. Is many of us. We are we strive for perfection and we bite off more than we can chew. We try to do too much. And his advice is, you know, whatever whatever your big goal, your bodacious goal is, cut it in half. And if that's not realistic, then whatever time frame that you're pl you're planning on doing in, then just double that time. So you give yourself some grace and don't try to be crazy because. You know, that's why these New Year's resolutions never work because people are, yeah. they just after two, three days and then they then they don't succeed. They're like, oh, and that's it. They give up. But um, so, yeah, little by little, right? Inch by little inch. By inch, little. inch yeah, by and yard. grace. Grace is such a huge factor to that too. And definitely learning to do that. Well, Steve, you've been awesome. You've been very vulnerable in sharing. We're going to go into our first commercial. And when we get back, I would love to hear your perspective on other others focused. So stay Absolutely. tuned when we come back. Kim Jacobs Consulting .com.
You know, people say opportunity knocks on every door. Right. No, opportunity stands by silently waiting for you to recognize it. So I want you to recognize that this is a time for you. This is an incredible time to have your own talk show. It establishes a level of credibility. Yes. And by being exposed to people on a regular basis, it allows you to strategically begin to impact and attract your audience. She can take you in a place in yourself that you can't go by yourself. So go to Kim Jacobs consulting.com. That's Kim Jacobs consulting.com. Did I say Kim Jacobs consulting.com? Yes, you did. Very good. Make sure you go there and sign up for the coaching. And we're looking forward to working with you. You have something special. You have greatness within you. So speaking of incredible leaders and coaches, Steve, I would love to know your ideas and thought patterns about others focused. What does that mean to you? Yeah, I mean, that's it, this, this particular topic is near and dear to my heart because for years and years, being so wounded and having so much uh, hurt and, you know, when you're, when you're wounded, when you're injured, a lot of times, most of the time you're, you're thinking about, okay, what can I do to you know, it's me. It's about me. It's about getting healed. It's about licking my own wounds, all that kind of stuff. But when you find out, when you finally get peace within yourself, and that's what happened for me, I kind of realized, you know what, enough of the, of the comparison game. Cause I always played the comparison game and I always, oh, always, yeah. lost. I always fell short. I was never as good as anyone else. And you know, this, the gentleman that I mentioned, who's a mentor to me, he's incredibly charismatic and funny. And I'm none of those things. Um, I have my own charisma and I can be funny, but I'm not him. And I, for years, I just always felt insecure and inadequate. And so I, I wound up um, not feeling great about myself. And so eventually I got peace. I said, you know, I'm going to leverage the things that I'm good with. Right? I'm good at, right. And I, I feel like I'm, I'm great in terms of being sincere and, um, mm -hmm. And, and there's other things that I feel good about, you know, my heart, I love to show my heart. So I got peace within myself. There was a few stories I could share on that from a silent meditation retreat to um, a short stint with a, with a therapist for a little bit, but got some peace. And then I said, you know what? I want to be others focused. I want to be a go-giver. I read the book, the go-giver. I've read mm -hmm. uh, Bob his books. I've actually, we've had him on our show, the master connector show. And um, great guy, and and him and his you know co-author John David Mann wrote wrote several, several really good books. And it started to be you realize that I need to be others focused. And you know what's funny is when I was me focused, I, I take the comparison of like sitting in front of a TV, and I used to do this for quite a while. Sit in front of a TV, and I would eat, eat a full pint of butter pecan Haagen Dazs ice cream. I could eat a full pint right on you know the whole sitting, love it. <laughs> Still to this day enjoy it yeah but uh yeah yeah you know what i mean so the challenge is you feel great eating it but afterwards you feel horrible right yeah and that was being me focused parallel there now when i work out i work out every every morning um i it's it's not something i'm like i can't wait to work out i gotta push myself but i do i i you know don't judge me i do uh, 200 push-ups in a row, 200 sit-ups in a row, and I, I, I'm on my spin bike for about 15 minutes and uh, do stretching, and I have a pretty rigorous morning practice. But So that's what I do, but I, I push myself to do it. And I don't feel, you know, I feel great afterwards, let's say it like that. And so being others-focused is like that. It's like I got to push myself. Being an introvert, you know, I, I – you know, you're an introvert because when you're done being around people, you're drained. And that's me. I'm definitely drained. I am. Um, I heard it said, I, I earn my pillow every day, right? At, you know, getting or being others focused, but I feel great about me, right? It, yeah. it's, it's a push, but I feel good. And when I stay in, you know, within myself, it might feel good for the moment, but I feel horrible. I don't feel like I'm fulfilled. So that's, that's what it is. And, and when you're others focused, people start to, open up. That's where connecting authentically comes in about and mm -hmm. you know, they all kind of overlap, but, but um, yeah, 
I, people see your heart. You know, so some of the challenges when you're in, in business development or when you're doing networking is there's a lot of people out there that want to pitch. And mm -hmm. um, I heard this recently. Uh, I'm using a P, not a B, but uh, stop the pitch slapping. Right. It's a lot of pitch slapping going on. You know, I like that. <laughs> I haven't heard that. That's great. It constantly people pitching you and yeah um yeah you got to stop the pitch and and mm -hmm. you know ditch the pitch right that's another great book by the way and so ditch the pitch and start to be others focused care about other people when mm -hmm. i started to do that the conversations that i had out and about meeting strangers wherever i was they became more uh i felt better more connected you know and when um you know, I was on my Zoom calls, you know, like my, my networking or connect calls. I felt more connected. You know, it's just it's when you're others focused, it, it's it's super important. So, yeah, that's awesome. And what I want to know about is when you you said that you had really had to get some peace with yourself, you know, whatever that was for you and. Um, it's, it's different for everyone when it finally clicks or when you finally can just breathe and you know how to calm the body down often enough to where you can go to that place at any time. But I'm curious, Steve, what are your thoughts on, did you, do you feel like you had to get to that point first and be more me focused before you could be others focused? It was a little bit of both. I, I don't think it's just, okay, you got to get this done and then you get to the next phase. It was a little bit of both. I, you know, one of the things one of my, one of my mentors said was he said, if you, if you, number one, if you, if you have this challenge, go find a, somebody or multiple people with that exact challenge and go help them. And then all of a sudden your challenge kind of goes away. Yeah. So that was one thing that I learned. And one um, taught twice yeah. learned. Yeah. yeah. And then I heard, also learned that, you know, if you help enough people get what they want, you'll eventually get what you want. Right. So those are some mm -hmm. things that were kind of in my head. And when I started to apply and I felt that as I started to get around other people and help other people, what was interesting is people started to be extremely complimentary to me. Mm -hmm. They started to, to compliment, you know, to, to thank me, appreciate me. Right. And in yeah. fact, what I heard and learned is yourself, your perception of who you are. It's not who you think you are. And this, this is, this is a little bit tricky. So you gotta listen closely is it's what I think you think I am. That's my perception of who I am. And yeah. If you help people and all of a sudden those people are saying, Steve, man, you're amazing. Like, you know, I, I, it, I don't want to be distracted on my phone here, but I could pull up a, a text recently where, you know, the, you know, super complimentary, you know, from one of the guys I mentor. And he said, you know, to the degree of, man, you are one of the, you, he, he, you know, he talked about God, you and, and his son are the three most important things in my life. And that's wow. why, you know, that's I mean, a big compliment. Yeah. I mean, yeah. to be up here with, with God, I mean, I, you know, I, I don't know, but, but yeah, it's, but when you hear stuff like that, it elevates you. So yeah, you don't need to necessarily be perfect. I was on the journey of getting comfortable with me, starting to reach out, help other people, started to heal myself. That's, that also a pieces of, of the puzzle. And eventually it all kind of came together and it's still work in progress. There's still parts that I still need to continue to, work on. I'm never going to be yeah. arriving. I'm, you know, you're either a tomato that's ripening or a tomato that's rotting. Right. And it's a cliche today, but that's true. You always got to, you always want to be growing and, and becoming something, you know, more than who you are today. Steve, you've taught me a couple of new things today about the tomatoes and all. I haven't heard that before. So thank you for enlightening me. I, I hear so much. I thought it was a cliche, but I guess maybe not. I, who knows? Maybe I've heard it, but I'm going to say that it's my first time heard All it from right. you. So you're correct. And, and many of our listeners would understand the networking arena and many of them wouldn't, but really it's uh, you're right. The, the pitching is definitely there. And so 
people to be coached and enlightened on networking and how to do it effectively is huge. It is such a need uh, yeah. and it's, and it is all communication and it is about learning more about them because what do people want to hear about? Themselves. Themselves. Yeah. Right. So I'm just curious if, if you would want to, if we can even do a little role play if you want, but how do you suggest would be a great starter conversation for someone? Well, there's different scenarios, right? But I'm just going to use, cause this is, this is an area that uh, eventually my mentors encouraged me to write a, a sequel to this book here, which is the how to become a master connector, not the Tao. The Tao is the way of or the path. So I'm a, more of a mindset and a philosophy, but the, the how to. So this is going to start the, maybe a little preview on that next book. But I like Shane, that though, Steve, you got to have the mindset first because that's do. where it begins. So I think you're yeah. doing it in accordance to order. <laughs> exactly. So meeting strangers, right? And the, my attitude, my mindset, my perspective is the world is your networking event, okay? So how do you start a conversation? You just break the ice with something, anything. It could be, that's, that's a nice blouse. It could be, um, you know, uh, you know. Complimentary who, who, is always great. Complimentary. It could be like, you know, uh, I'm sure by you also, but we, you know, there's threats of this smoke from Canada coming down. And so I, I'll, I'll, I could say something, Hey, what do you think of the whole smoke stuff going on? You know, whatever, there's so many things. It could be yeah. situational. It could be something that they're wearing. It could be, you know, when I'm at the gym, somebody has, uh, you know, huge muscles. I'm like, dude, what happened? Did you get stung by a bee? You're like what happened? <laughs> What's up there? Yeah. You know, get them laughing, right? Something to break the ice. Yeah. And sometimes the icebreaker can be, you know, you could go two or three layers, right? Um, you know, you know, whether that, you know, how long you work out, you know, how many years you've been working out, how often do you work out, whatever, or, you know, make them the expert. That's yeah, a great one. For sure. yeah. Yeah. And, you know, asking questions or whatever it is. And then the next part of the conversation I like to start with is where you're from. And that could go many ways. Uh, you know, Hey, I'm, I'm from New York, but I was originally from Florida. Now, why in the world would you move from a butte from a place sunny Florida to the to New York? Uh, and you know, then they might say, "Well, you know, job," and or maybe uh, you know, you know, there's a girl, my girlfriend, who's now my fiance, who's soon to be wife, whatever. This and dig into that, right? And then mm -hmm. you know, I might say, you know, especially if they say the job, you know, job opportunity. Well, what do you do? And you know, how do you like it? How off? How long you've been there? What's your long term? Do you have like a, a you know, what's your trajectory? I mean, so many questions on that. And by the way, by the time you've had that, you know, whatever, it's we're probably talking five, six, seven, eight, ten minute conversation. You've created a little mini friendship. So mm -hmm. to me, my the next thing I say is we should stay in touch. And mo and most people say absolutely. Now they might ask me what I do, and uh, you know, when when I when I tell them what I do, I know you introduced me as a business automation consultant, but I don't leave with that because um, that's just one piece of what I do. But so when they when they ask me what I do, I say, you know, I'm, I um, well, I actually involved with several companies. I started my first out of college in advertising. I did that for a lot of years, transitioned into technology. Now I do consulting. I, I actually had a karate studio. I um, I do some speaking. I, I also have a, a book I just wrote and I do broadcast uh, just a couple things. And then I go to them. Things. Right. <laughs> and, and I go to them. And, and so that's that's kind of what I do. And. People, you know, most of the time I'm like, yeah, yeah, we should definitely. And whether it's at the sauna, at the gym, I've made a lot of friends that that way or or wherever it happens to be. Um, most people don't have a card these days. And if I have a card or not, I don't usually take it out because, um, again, I think that's pitchy and salesy. And which card about which of what I'm doing is it? So that's another challenge. I did make I, I did make a generic C Spiro Master Connector card which kind of links to the stevespiro.com that you have right down the screen there. So that, you know, kind of depending upon which direction we're going to go, uh, they, you know, we can pivot that way. But anyway, I say, Hey, we should stay in touch. Uh, let me give you my, let me shoot you my number. What's yours. And I yeah. get their number and I, I text them or dial their number and we store each other's numbers. And now we have, I made a new friend and, you know, I, I'll afterwards connect with them on LinkedIn if they're on LinkedIn and, and that's a new connection. And that's, that's yeah. as simple as it is. And it's 
believe it or not, anyone listening, you did this already. You did this growing up because the friend you have today, I'm guessing you weren't, you didn't come out of each mother's womb at the same time and you were in the in the incubators next to each other. And then all of a sudden you grew up together just like that. You had to make friends mm -hmm. through just conversation and you stayed in touch. Yeah. And people do that professionally today. It's not weird. It's not unusual. Yeah. It's what we do. But just sometimes people think it's, it's a little different, but it's not, it's what you're used to doing. So that's, that's just a short little tip on how to make a new friend. And I do that every day. Um, and it's fun and it's, you know, it's interesting. And yeah, do I occasionally think somebody is, you know, I mean, I mentioned, you know, uh, my wife this or my wife that, cause I don't want them thinking I'm hitting on them if it's a guy and, yeah. you know, or if it's a girl, I don't want them thinking I'm hitting on them either. But so I, I mentioned yeah, it that. Helps the comfort too, you know, yeah. they felt more at ease, I think, you know, yeah. especially with the opposite sex. Yeah. I don't do that a lot, but, but, I, but if it happens, it happens. Yeah. 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 And, you know, over time, it just gets easier and easier when the more people that you talk to and the more, you know, connections that you make and the exchange yep. of information, it just gets easier. I think when you first go out and do it, it, it feels terrifying for a lot of people. But you're right, Steve, you know, it's we've been doing it for a long time. We have all made friends at one point or another. And so right. it's just to get back into that routine. And I love the way that you described just talking with somebody because really having a great conversation can become so easy and being curious about somebody else. Like, you know, what do you love? What are your passions? Where are you from? And to yeah. truly be curious about another person is a great compliment to them. For sure. Yeah. I mean, you said it before, but Dale Carnegie, again, what, you know, how to win friends and influence people. Another great book mm -hmm. he says that best the people's most favorite conversation or topic is themselves. Their most yeah. favorite yeah. word in the whole wide world is their name. So I've, I've, I've learned to get good at remembering somebody's name when they tell you their name. Um, I have to repeat it in my mind, you know, a few times and on purpose, because on purpose, I know me, I, I could easily just get the name. It still happens. And I, I totally zone on it, you know? Yeah. Um, you know, you try to, yeah. You try to keep a conversation going. So there's that your brain's working on that. And then the, you know, the name. So, but anyway, it's, it's all, it's all fun and it's, it's an art. It's a skill. It is an art and a skill. So I'm going to touch on it just one last time yeah. because we're so familiar and used to talking about ourselves. I yeah. feel like it can be very difficult to learn how to start giving that conversation and that stage to somebody else, right? And where we allow them to do the talking, that's not easy. It's not natural. Like you said, it's an art. Are there certain cues or tips that you told yourself or had to remember for yourself in order to help you along with that journey, if you can remember early on? Well, if we're talking about what I just described, it, it's as simple as what I said. It's in my mind, I have the four the four stage checklist. Let's break the ice. Where you're from? What do you do? We should stay in touch. There it's, you go. Yeah. It, you know that's all it is. Um, but yeah. you know, knowing that, you know, obviously, if they give an answer, now listen. If if you could you could tell by their body language if they're kind of like, you know, that they don't want to talk. Okay, I'm letting it go, right? But if they if they're 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 facing you, they're smiling. You know, they they kind of want to talk you know, I'm going to keep ask, you know, asking questions and it's so much easier. People talk about, Oh, I don't know if I'm a big conversationalist. Again, I remember hearing, you know, reading a story in the book, how to win friends where I think it's from that book where the, there was a man who was at a cocktail party and it was this famous socialite, I believe. And uh, he asked her, like, they started a conversation. I think he might have said one or two words and she just went on and on and on. And then afterwards, the, the host of the party, she told the host of the party about this man and said he is the most incredible conversationalist there is. Meanwhile, he hardly said anything, but he let her talk. And it's so easy if you let the other person talk. You don't have to be a genius. You don't have to be like super worldly. And, you know, if you don't know about if somebody's into pickleball now, that's the big buzz today. 
well, tell me, what do you like about pickleball? And I don't know a lot about, I think the sport sounds great. I know I've, you know, I used to play tennis. I understand it's similar, but tell me more. Tell me what you like about it. What, you know, what's the, what's the best kind of racket to get or whatever you could ask questions. Mm -hmm. And I learn about different things by asking questions. So now when the next time I see somebody who tells me about pickleball, I have a little bit more information, but again, don't make it about you being the knowledge guy. Just ask questions and let them talk. It's so easy. Yeah, absolutely. Well, we're going to go to the second commercial. When we come back, I really want to know what led you to the Taoism aspect in your book. So right. very curious about that. Stay tuned. can learn more about Bella Grace ooh, in the description below, as well as Steve's book information and how to order that. So let's talk a little bit about that. How did you get to the Taoism aspect of the Tao of a master connector? So just to clarify, I'm not a, like a Tao kind of person per se. I mean, what, what, um, so a couple things. So number one in the martial arts, what was talked about, what was practiced, if you want to say, is is the um, is was a Zen Buddhist kind of mentality, right? Mm -hmm. Not not that I'm a Zen Buddhist or anything, but it was it was sort of uh, that sort of be in the now. And I'll tell you a quick story. When I started training the martial arts, prior to that, I alluded to before, I was into tennis. I was I was doing tennis six days a week, six seven eight hours a day. I was pretty well. From a technical standpoint, it was pretty good. But when I would go up against people, opponents, I would choke. It was all in my head. And fast forward, I want up kind of saying, all right, I'm going to take the martial arts now. I kind of shifted over, started training, started learning about being in the now. And if you watch one of my favorite movies is The Last Samurai with Tom Cruise. Mm -hmm. And uh, they do they give a great depiction of what the way of the warrior is, the Bushido and and he talks about there's a scene in the movie where there's, I guess this is translator who speaks English and Japanese, and he um, and Tom Cruise is fighting this kind of bully guy, uh, is samurai of course, and they're they're using wooden sticks. I think they're called katanas, and they're fighting, and he's getting his butt kicked, Tom Cruise. Uh, and um, wait uh, a minute, I don't know if that's possible. Yeah, well, in the movie, it's what happened. Yes. <laughs> okay. Uh, but anyway, his his character in the movie is is uh is Aldrin, right? He's a, he's like a famous uh warrior, but not in the art of samurai. And so he's getting his butt kicked, and the gentleman, his translator says to him, too many minds. And what I learned in the martial arts was the concept of mu shin. Mm -hmm. Mu meaning no, shin meaning mind, and so no minds or or not really thinking, just doing. And I learned about being kind of here and now, and, and it really helps. So I fast forward, start training, started to, to practice this. Fast forward, I go back to, to tennis for a little bit, and I'm now great. I'm technically just as good. I didn't lose most of my skills at that point, but now it wasn't in my head. And I was I was beating people that were as good or better than me because mm -hmm. it wasn't in my head. 
And so I learned, I learned about that, but what I learned about, and it's also depicted in the last samurai really well is what I spoke about before, which is Bushi Do, Do meaning the way, the way of, right? And I also learned that in a very similar way in the, in the, I know it's Mandarin, some of the other Chinese languages, Do is Tao in, in the same kind of way. And it's the way of or path of. And mm-hmm. so, uh, and one of the things I love about the Bushi Do, and I did a post recently on LinkedIn about this, and what does the Tao mean? And I, so the Tao, meaning uh, the way of or path, it, with my interpretation of it from doing a lot of studying and reading in the martial arts is the Bushido, the way of the warrior, right? It's a way to operate. It's a way, you know, where you're operating integrity. You're, you're, you know, putting others first, right? If you watch the movie, The Last Samurai, you could see a lot of it, right? These samurai were not just like savages. They were actually really, 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 um, they cared about people and they cared about the villages and they were revered because they were so uh, integrity based. And so I love the, the Bushido and I, you know, and the idea of that concept. And I also, w- when I would watch things, you know, in Westernized version of, of that, which was, you know, the, the uh, King Arthur and the Knights of the Round Table. And they talked mm-hmm. about, yeah, the, um, you know, kind of the, uh, the code, the code of the warrior, if you will, is similar, yeah. very similar. And I fell in love with that idea of living for a higher purpose, a higher calling. And so that's always been the back of my mind in terms of, you know, the, the way I wanted to live my life. And so with the Tao, meaning the way of a path of, as I was kind of putting together what, what this book is going to be called, that just keep kept coming to me, right? And the, the idea of master connector, right? There's a little bit of a pun there too, a few puns, right? So master in, in the martial arts, yeah. you know, high level in the martial arts, you're called a master, yeah. right? Uh, connector, right? And when you strike, you connect, right? So there's there's that piece of it as well. Yeah. Um, so the Tao of a master connector, I felt like was important um, because it was the philosophy, the way of the path of. And so that's kind of where it came from. By the way, TAO, uh, my mentor would talk a lot about this, is together as one. And so there's a unity aspect ah. of that word also, which, which means something as well, which is, you know, being at one with the universe, being at one with your higher power, being at one if you're a couple, being at one if you're a team, right? And together as one. And in, in the movie, again, like movies, as you could tell, uh, First Night, don't judge the, you know, the movie bad, be, be Richard Gere is in it. I know there's some interesting <laughs> stuff there. But um, yeah, but First Night, in, in this, there's a scene and there it says, in serving each other, we become free. And it's about serving others, right? And, mm-hmm. and you know, putting others before you. So that's that's what it means to me. It's not sort of the classic Taoism thing, but it's definitely the way of a path up. Yeah, absolutely. Thank you for sharing that story. That is incredible. I love how you integrated it all. You truly are. I mean, if we want to talk about business and branding, but you are very much... Um, holding that essence of all of those things. So that is very, very cool. And when we start talking about connection, let's go into building community because you've mentioned before about that is something that you do and you teach others to do. What is that? What does that look like? Because just having being connected with others and getting information and contacts, um, it's different than actually building community. Absolutely. Well, there's a lot of areas I could go here and it is one of the four pillars that I speak about on the show. It's one of the four pillars. And when I speak, uh, when I do keynotes and so forth, and, and that is building a community, growing connections, um, the word networking, right? I know that kind of looks, people look at that as a ugly word, especially the, 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 the I gen generation, Gen Z, uh, Gen X, whatever this, they, they look down upon networking. And that's kind of why I liked the idea of calling myself the master connector mm. versus the master networker, right? Yeah. Because connecting yeah. is much more important to me. It's much more meaningful than networking, right? Yeah. So, but building, so I, so building community, growing connections, to me, that's a more 
better way of calling of saying networking. Okay. So, so one of the things that I, I love doing as I grow and I'm, I'm pretty much exclusively on LinkedIn. I know that's how we connected through your, your husband. Right. Um, and uh, we, so I'm everybody that I connect with, I want to get on a call with. I do. I want to get to know them. Uh, and not everyone agrees to this, but you know, if you connect with me, whether you connect with me or I happen to hit the connect button and we, I send a connect request. When you accept, I'm going to say, let's get on a call because I, I feel like why be connected? It's not just about growing your numbers. It's about true connection. So let's yeah. get on a call. I know it's old school, but let's do it. And um, so that's one way in which I'm trying to build relationships and, and just to get to know each other. Yeah. So I, re I recently read a great book. My, my co-host Cameron, Cameron Toth, who has the Master Connector show with me. Um, he's been great. He's pushed me in a major way. But he, um, he said for a long time, you should read the book, Never Eat Alone. And I finally got to... to I don't read books right these days. I listen to them because of my learning disability. So to be truthful, but yeah, I, I listened to it and it was amazing. And one of the things it says in the book is when you're traveling, reach out to your network and see if they want to grab coffee or grab something, a bite to eat. And yeah, I've been doing that. This is my second time going to Charlotte. And I, you know, so two months ago I did this and I had five coffee meetings set up in wow. Charlotte. That's a yeah. lot of coffee, Steve. Uh, yeah. <laughs> and there's one cup of coffee because otherwise it'd be, you'd be peeling me off the ceiling. But um, yeah, I had five. But it, what's interesting is because of the way it all kind of worked out, it was five of us at it. At, we wound up being all at a, at a big table and we had a big conversation. So kind of. Oh, I like that table. even better. That's that a great better. idea. Yeah, I mean, it just sort yeah. of worked out. One person was a little late, one person was early. I was like, hey, why don't you come, come in now? I mean, I'm here and we just, and then the other person arrives, like, come on, join, you know, and I'm, and, and it's interesting. You want to talk about others focused, you know, I called the meeting so we could get to know each other better. I, I said to each of the five people, tell, tell everybody about yourself. And they did, and they had really good conversation. And you know what? Nobody said, Steve, tell us about you. I'm like, okay. <laughs> All right. But that's okay. You know, like, but they got to know each other. They exchanged numbers, you know, and it was great. And that's just an example, small example, right? That's a great example. I think that is a perfect example, Steve, of building community because you yeah. are, are joining others together. And yeah. whether it's through drinks or meals, Food and beverage is one of those things. It's one of the biggest connectors that we have. Oh, yeah. Brings sure. us together. Yeah, no doubt. Yeah, so that that's one one thing that I do. And you know, I'm a big I'm big on. I have a networking group that I that I'm a part of. And and one of the things that I do is I when I get on these networking calls, these connecting calls, I call them not networking calls. Connect, correct myself. Connecting calls is. Often, most of the time, I'll always have some type of add value. And I love mm -hmm. inviting some of those folks that I get on a connect call with to come check out my networking group and be a one-time visitor and, and meet some cool people. And so that's another way of kind of growing community and growing connections because there's there's a way, you know, they, they get they get to meet some cool people in my network. And then another thing that I do, I don't do this for everybody, but if if the person feel if I feel good about them. I will say, hey, pick six names from my contacts on my LinkedIn and I'll make six introductions. I don't oh, just I like say, that. Yeah, I don't just say, hey, if you find somebody you want me to introduce you, let me know. Nobody ever does. I say six and send me a list of six. And many people do it. Many yeah. people. I mean, what an incredible invitation that something that you will do for others is to give space for and connect somebody introductions, right? That that's a big piece. It's, it's no longer that, that cold touch, so yeah. to speak, you know, when it, it gains credibility, when you are being introduced to somebody and it's so powerful. I think a lot of people forget about that, but it's so easy to do. If somebody comes to mind, like, Hey, you would 
you would fit really well with this person. Like you have a lot in common or you would complement each other in business. And so let me make an introduction for you. I think yeah. that's awesome that you do that. Wow. Six people. Holy geez. And the thing is, April, that I'm not just uh, because uh, full disclosure, my brain short circuits when you have 24,000 connections on LinkedIn, I That's can't, my brain that does not say, oh, you need to speak to April unless you and I just got off a call and I got to speak to somebody who I, I think you'd be, it, uh, but that's rare. That's super rare. Yeah. So I, and I say to people, listen, you know who you want to connect with better than me. You know, your target, you know, your, what's the phrase everyone used your, your avatar of who you want to connect with. So yeah. Search through my LinkedIn. I know it's big, but you could filter and come up with the six. You'll be better at it than me. And versus the whole, you know, I like to, I call it the needle in the haystack theory, waiting for, I remember back early on in networking, there was a, um, you know, we had a painter in our group and somebody, I'm, I'm in, in my queue back in the technology days and somebody bellows out, a coworker says, hey, does anyone know of a painter? And I'm like, yeah, I, I know somebody and I connected them and that painter got his business. But that's so rare, so rare, you know. And so I like doing it this way because it gives that it, it gives me the opportunity to offer something up now. Not if I think about it, if somebody says, you know, if you ever hear of anybody that X, Y and Z. Well, the chances of that are very slim, not to mention that I've got 16 different things I'm working on that I'm listening for because of all the things I'm doing plus all the people in my network. So that chances are slim. So by offering the six, it gives me the ability to give, to add value today. Now, now, if you don't take me up on it, that's on you, but right. I do that. and I love doing it. It's, it's been great. I think it's wonderful. And it, it's definitely for the listeners that are here to, to think about that. If you don't, ask to be connected, then it's never going to happen. Right. But just to start thinking about that is like, I really want to know this person. I mean, that's how we have incredible guests sure. such as yourself, Steve, on the show is because we ask between my husband and I and other people. Yeah. It's just that it's, uh, you just keep connecting and it's incredible and I love it. And it energizes you in such a beautiful fashion. Now, Steve, you have, you do so much just doing all of those things and being in master connectors a lot. It takes a lot of energy. When we start talking about wellness and, and you have learned a lot to gain peace for yourself, what are some things that you do daily to really help bring you peace as you're doing so much throughout your day? Well, I heard it said many times you want to bracket your day and the control the controllables and you know the day gets crazy mm -hmm. you know as the day goes on so the morning is the best time for me by the time the evening rolls around i'm spent i'm toast yeah you know, i've earned my pillow i you know i i just i laid it out on the field you know i so morning is is the crucial time for me so to answer your question i'll give you my complete morning practice ready and uh -huh. don't get intimidated by this but i wake up in the morning i pray with my wife uh, then from there I go and I make coffee and breakfast for her, do the dishes. But while I'm doing those things, because it's very mechanical, I have an audio book playing. So I'm getting my, my book reading, so to speak in when I finished that, uh, then I'll go ahead and I'll put on an audio, uh, some kind of podcast, some kind of other audio. And while that's happening, I'm stretching. I do, um, mm -hmm. actually that's not true. That's not hundred percent true. The beginning part of the stretching, when I get on my mat, I stretch and I self-talk. I have a self-talk script that I go over and it covers five, the five crucial things from wellness to relational to business to finances, um, spiritual. Okay. Mm. And I, I cover in the self-talk those things. Then when I finish stretching, then I go on to my spin bike. And by then I'm already listening to that audio I spoke about. Right. So I'm on the spin bike. I'm doing my spin 15 minutes. Uh, after that, the audio is still playing. I now I'm I'm doing my 200 push-ups, my 200 sit-ups, right? So I get my fitness in in the morning. I, I go yeah. to the gym later too, but I get it in every day. Okay. Then after that, I go ahead. I'll, if it's the nice out, I'll go outside, have my cup of coffee, and I do a little spiritual reading, you know, from Bible, whatever. Um, and then after that, I do a, um, a little creative visualization, meditation, where I play a little story in my mind. 
And then after that, I have a, a gratitude list of, of three things I'm grateful for, and I'm out. And that's about an hour and 20 minutes of a morning practice for myself. That's an awesome morning practice, Steve. Thank you so much for sharing that. And you truly do have that others focused in gear. You you pray with your wife. You do that together as a couple. You make her breakfast. What? That's awesome. And Five love then, languages. I, re I read the book Five Love Languages, and <laughs> hers, is, hers is acts of service. Yeah. I learned that later in life that I needed to, because she would always do things for me, and I was like, She's I showing you what she wants, right? She was showing me that I wasn't getting it. I was clueless. I'm a physical touch and the words of affirmation guy. But but now I've learned that if I want to keep her love tank filled, I gotta I gotta feed her what she wants. And so yeah. and and I, I find joy in it. I really do. I enjoy doing it. That's cool. And and let that be again a lesson for those listening. Sometimes we do the things that we really want to have done for ourselves. So that's kind okay. of a little cue, yeah. tips and tricks. And um and then you really go throughout your day and, and you're working on yourself and you're filling up your tank. So you're filling up, you know, the most important people in your circle and your tank. And I love all of the things that you do. That's awesome. Thank you so much for sharing because you're really incorporating mind, body, and soul. 100% for sure. Cool. Yeah. Well, Steve, it has been truly a joy to have you on the show. You've given so much insight. Is there anything else that you want to share with the audience today? Well, listen, it's not a, it's not a, uh, a plug just for the sake of because I want to want to sell a book. But no, I mean seriously, the book, the book that was written because I really want to be the light, uplift, and inspire. And if you look here, uh, the 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 topic title is inspiring you to kickstart your success journey, right? A lot of people need a little kick in the rear, right? Um, <laughs> yeah, we all do sometimes. The back is, you know, inspiring you to get out of your comfort zone, which I've had to do that as well. So this book, it, it's easy read. It's not, it's not like a technical book, but it's an easy read, but it, it's a good bathroom book, right? You, you know, <laughs> but I would highly recommend get the book because it just will, it'll, it'll, it'll fill your cup, right? Mm -hmm. And like you said, the way you can best be, be others focused is you got to fill yourself up. So you, so you're not an empty cup pouring out nothing. You got to pour right. from a full cup. And so this book will be a one way to help you. Uh, I'd love to connect with you. Um, you know, I, I'd love to see how I can add value in any way. Cause again, that's my purpose here is to, you know, true success is how many people are better because I was here. That's what I believe true success is all about. And I don't mean I, as it, as any, everyone should feel that way. That's what I believe true success is, is your, is others are everyone. People are better because you, I were here. Yeah. yeah. Oh, that's cool. And everyone you connect with Steve, he will meet with you. So that's true. He yeah. does it. And I, I'm excited. I'm gonna, we're mainly, and I will get that book for sure. And so on Amazon Kindle, I, I didn't yeah. mention it. Amazon Navigating Kindle. everyone to in the description, it is all there. You can find all of his social media handle links. You can find his website and the Amazon link for the book and excited to stay tuned for the next one. Is, is that the big what's next for you, Steve? No, I, I think I, I want to, I got to do an audio version of this book, uh, an audible version. I really do before I night, ne write the next book, but, but um, that's going to be a, a good amount of time and effort. Um, but ultimately the big next is I really want to get on a TEDx stage and eventually want to be paid to travel the world, speak and inspire and be a beacon of light. So that's really the, the, the next big thing. The book is really, and the, the next book I'm going to eventually do is really just a tool to facilitate that. Yeah. World travel, here we come, right? Absolutely. Awesome. Okay. Well, thank you so much again, Steve. It has been a pleasure to have you on the yeah, Wellness fun. Driven Life Show. And I want to say to our audience, again, you can reach him at www.stevespiro.com. And goodbye for now. And we will see you later.